$79,812.70 for a total of, uh, uh, of $102,309.37. And we advanced from the 216 E911 fund uh, $400,000 to uh, create those balances. Thank you. Um, we're going to have public comments, but we're asking that you keep it down to three minutes because we've got a lot of business and things we need to get done and we want to stay here until 10 o'clock tonight, so. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Dunn, were you here? Yep, I am. Would you like to talk for three minutes? I can start out, yes, thank you. <laughs> can I ask that each of you announce your name and township when you come forward for me so I can have it for the record? I know yours. So <laughs> Tom Dunn. Grout Township, and uh, thank you very much for uh, this uh, time this evening. Um, I had sent, I believe, to Amy and to all of you uh, a, an open letter, and the reason I sent it out again was that we do have some new commissioners that uh, have not really been appraised of the, the zoning situation and the lawsuits and so on that are, that are happening here within the county at this point in time. And that particular letter that I sent out, it was kind of an overview, and especially for Sandra and Sharon, uh, to kind of fill you in on the, the situation with, with zoning and how zoning uh, is really the death of property rights within, within any community. And especially when we're, we're looking at uh, property being taken by the EPA, the government, the DNR, the DEQ, and the federal uh, departments that are trying to place jurisdiction within our counties and within the entire state of Michigan without any due course to we the people. And we the people uh, are the ones that have got to show not only the county and the township and the state, but we have to show and lead as the people. It doesn't start from the top and work down. And the information that, that I did send out is, is based on uh, the, the lawsuit that had been commenced uh, about a year or so ago at the Millers in reference to mud bogging, but mud bogging is not just mud bogging. It, 
it, it all falls into all kinds of property rights, whether you're having an anniversary party, whether you're having a gun shoot, it doesn't make any difference. It all boils down to the same thing. Improper enforcement in an area that jurisdiction doesn't stand. And, it, and in the documents that I sent you, I did send you uh, a memorandum of understanding that uh, the two new members probably haven't, haven't seen, but was sent out uh, some time ago in reference to the, the lawsuit and the Millers. I know some people said they've read it, some hadn't, but I think everybody's got a copy of it now where you know what we were talking about in this memorandum of understanding. It pretty much outlines everything that can be done. It also, I also included in there a stipulation and order for dismissal that was sent to the uh, uh, county prosecutor, not Mr. Miller. And, uh, that could come directly from this board. They could make a determination on whether they wanted to, to cease and desist in this, uh, this lawsuit that, that's happening uh, as we speak today. And when we look at uh, the additions of the way these lawsuits are, are being fashioned up and the, the information, that, the disinformation, the information that I've included in here is truthful information. You can find it. It's in the statutes. And when you read the zoning ordinances, you have to read them. I don't know if you have read them or not, but it says, in a lot of cases, it says may. May does not mean shall. Shall is an absolute must. May means that you can do it or you can do it. And it, and it applies not only to, to the zoning commissions, but it also applies to those folks where zoning applies. In other words, you may apply for a permit of some sort. That may mean you don't have to do that. And when you're looking at the public domain, you have to look at what public property is versus private property and where the state, county, townships have jurisdiction. And it's very, very clear in a lot of court cases where private patented property does not fall under the public domain. There is not a public interest or a proprietary interest or a monetary interest in private property that anybody in this room can show or the county can show where a property has, where the county has an interest in that property. In other words, where, where's the county signature on anything on private property? It's not there. And so that's why I sent this out I'm open for any kind of uh, questions. Um, it was brought up in, in another uh, situation that uh, because taxation can be involved in, in, or, in an ordinance, if the county can tax, well, then the county has absolute control or jurisdiction over a piece of property. But you have to really look at the statutes at large. You have to look at the taxing statutes one, of the state. One minute. One minute to go? Good. <laughs> I was kind of watching up here. Thank you. And we look at an ad valorem tax versus a direct tax. If you read your Constitution, Article 9, Section 5, it's very clear. And if you can understand what that says, then you would understand that private property within the public domain is non-existent. Right hand and left hand, you have public property and you have private property. And I would certainly hope that this commission would, would take a very, very hard stand on private property rights within this county. Are there any questions? Thank you for your time, and uh, we'll consider your information. Thank you very Thank much. You. Appreciate it. Some guests to uh, State Representative Joel Johnson. Thank you. Three minutes. Can I stand instead of sitting down? Sure. Okay.
Good to see all of you. I really commend you for doing this in the evening. And obviously, it, it works for getting people here. So, appreciate that. Um, just a couple things I wanted to bring up. One, uh, career technical education, skill trades for kids to get closer. Um, we passed it in the house, in my bill, along with Ed McBrooms, uh, several months ago. We've been held up in the Senate, but I think we're getting close to getting somewhere with that. Uh, the governor, I think, is, is behind us. And so we hope within the next few months we're going to see something there. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about is something that you've heard a bit about, and that's the Detroit bankruptcy. And there, there's a proposal out there that talks about um, receiving $350 million from foundations. These foundations want to keep the Detroit Institute of Arts where it is. Uh, and that's what they're basing their donations from. So $350 million from them, uh, the governor has requested that we okay putting $350 million of state money, which would come from tobacco settlement money, along with that, and get probably another $100 million from other places, including unions. Um, and the idea behind this would be to protect the pensions as much as possible for the employees of Detroit. My understanding is that there is a plan out there that would uh, protect police and fire completely if that went through. It would uh, say that the, the general population uh, folks who are under pensions with Detroit would have a 4% cut, uh, which I'm amazed. I never thought that they would bring them out that close to whole on that. But when that, that was, that proposal was brought out several months ago and I said the thing I need to know is what is the Detroit Institute of Arts work. Recently there's uh, it's been publicized that there are uh, entities that are willing to pay over a billion dollars, 1.2 in fact, for Detroit Institute of Arts. Now uh, it's a shame to sell the art that's there. It's, it's a good draw, it's, it's too bad, but in my opinion uh, Detroit hasn't handled like, their finances well. They have made agreements that they shouldn't have made, and uh, they, in my opinion, they need to sell the art rather than us putting our our taxpayer money into that. Here, 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 yes. The thing, the thing I said is, you know, if my kid had saved up and got himself a Corvette, but got himself in financial trouble later on came to me for the money, and I'd say, sell the Corvette. And this is the same thing, this is, this is a, it's a great thing to have, but it's not a necessity, and uh, I'm, I'm gathering from you that I'm headed on the right track with that. that. Okay, well thank you very much. That's the big thing that I wanted to talk to you about, because that's coming. Do you use your own three minutes? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I know you've got quite, yes. Um, I'll hit you on it every time I see you in public. School vouchers, are you guys making any progress or any discussion at all about school vouchers? It, very little discussion on it right now. Uh, I, I think that it will continue to be an issue that, that may come around. I'm not entirely sure school of choice is, is, is an absolute. I'd like to see school vouchers. And, and it's, been, you know, it's been working more and more to where people do have the choices. Um, you know, and one of the things that we're trying to do is uh, is trying to make sure that uh, the kids do have good schools available, and and you know that comes from from a combination of public, private, charters, the whole works. But uh, it's it's something that we probably we haven't heard the end of for sure. There's there's going to be more. So, well, thank you very much. Yeah. I'm try to <coughs> jump around a little bit, try to get some course. In case you want to leave, uh, you can. You know, if you got to go to another place, you got to go. Or, uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Spurry, emergency manager. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just briefly, I want to recap what's going on in the last week or so with regard to the flooding. Um, April 12th through 14th, roughly, we had a major flooding event here across the state of Michigan. And I just want to do, commend the efforts of our new emergency manager, Mary Ann Hill. Um, this girl got on a plane um, from Florida and flew back to Gladwin to assist with this event. Um, 
She was in Florida to teach a FEMA class on behalf of the federal government, so she lost out on that $3,000 to come back to Gladwin to um, do her job. Um, her and I um, together drafted a local declaration, a local state of emergency. Um, there's like five counties across the state that have done that. That's the first stepping stone, um, so to speak, to um, garner federal dollars, potential federal dollars back to this county. It's not a guarantee, but it is the first step. Um, without a local state of emergency, you're not in the ball game for federal dollars. So we've got that first step. Um, she and I also did damage assessment across the county in the Radoff area. There was severe flooding, um, high water marks. Um, the Army Corps of Engineers, she's meeting with them Wednesday so that they can mark some of the high water marks to, for future flooding studies. Um, this, this new position, or this new person that we have here in Gladwin County, I just want to impress upon you how fortunate we are to have her. Um, I have, you know, I cover 14 counties and I've had five new emergency managers in four years and she is by far the best. And you are lucky enough to have her. Um, I want to remind folks, and I know everybody um, has budget issues and, you know, people say, well, why, how can you hire a new person when you're laying off people? This is a mandated position. It's not like it'd be nice if we had an emergency manager. It's a mandated position by law, Act 390, Section 409. You shall, as the board, appoint an emergency manager. And if you don't, then all the responsibility that comes with that position falls on the board chair. Um, <laughs> so um, another thing that people aren't really aware of that I'd really like to um, express to you again is the fact that this is a position where 38 to 39 percent, it depends per year, of federal dollars come back to the county based on this person's position, okay? So, or stay with me for just a minute. Let's say she was paid $40,000 a year, which is more in line with what she's worth, and she's a full-time employee, okay? And by the way, she worked 56 hours last week. Um, let's say she was paid $40,000 a year, and 38 to 39% of that salary would be reimbursed by EMPG or the federal government. So roughly 15600 okay? So that means the net amount that this county would be paying that person would be 24400 which is less than what you're paying her now, plus this assistant um, director that you have in place. Um, which means, leads me to my next point, is, and that is that Gladwin County is the only county in Region 3, which is comprised of 14 counties, that pays an assistant director or a deputy director in emergency management. Usually it's a person who already works for the county and they just fill in as back backfill when somebody's gone. Um, but it's my personal opinion and take it for what it's worth that you need to just get out of this girl's way and let her do her thing. Because <laughs> she is really impressive. She knows what she's doing. I taught her the um, web EOC on the fly. She's got it. We, we enter damage assessment into the system together. That information was set up to the, to the state level. Um, and there are several counties that have now requested a governor's um, declaration. So her and I will discuss that tomorrow as she returns back to work. Um, if we want to go that next step, we'll, we'll get us that much closer to potential federal dollars. So I just want to impress upon you how impressed I am with this individual and how important I think it is to keep her. Um, everything that she did for this county last week is, is, is great. Um, it opens the doors for federal dollars to come back. Um, Would you like to address your letter that took in how much money she brought in already? Sure. Um, yeah, I, I don't know it off the top of my head, but... Yeah, I felt compelled to write this letter to uh, Mr. Walters, the board chair, reference um, Mary Ann Hill's efforts. Um, her and I attended a regional Homeland Security Planning Board on April 7th. We go to these board meetings every month, the Monday, first Monday of every month. In her very first board meeting, she, um, she made like four motions on behalf of Gladden County to the tune of $31,000 worth of grant funding to come back to this county. Okay? Had she not done that at that meeting, that, me that money would have gone back to the federal government. So 
That coupled with the other pot of money, which is the EMPG that I mentioned previously, that 39% comes back, this girl is worth her weight in gold for this county. And I live in this county, so I have a vested interest. And also, if you've got somebody in this position who knows what they're doing, and I don't have to babysit them, it makes my job easier as well. So I thank you for your time. Do you have any questions? We used Brad uh, just for a couple days, and that's going to stop. So. Okay, okay. Any questions? Uh, beat me with a hand, so I'll go second. I understand what she does, that's what woman can do for the county, but if she can do so much good for this county, why are you representing her and her not here representing herself? Because she's a part-time employee and she put in 56 hours last week and she can't work full-time and get paid for part-time. She'd be well, getting paid to be here. The job, then she should be here to represent herself, correct? Right? If that's your feeling, that's fine, but um, she asked me to be here on her behalf, and I most, you know, I agree, you know, I'm not getting paid to be here either, but I, I think it was worthwhile. How easy is it to find out what grants that you're um, accepting for the county? Because it's my understanding with grants, there's always strings attached. So if you're taking federal dollars, there's federal strings attached. And I think as a county, since you're representing us, we kind of want to know what strings you're attaching to us by going to get grant dollars. Okay, there's two pots of money. There's EMPG money and then there's Homeland Security money. The EMPG money is the money that I talked about with the 38, 39% of her salary that's reimbursed by the federal government. Um, she has to fill out a quarterly report to say, I did this, and she has to turn that into me, and I turn it into the state. You, it's not free. It's not free. You, it, there are strings attached, so you have to show the work that you've done, okay? This county lost out on EMPG money because there was nobody doing the work for several weeks, okay? Once this girl got on board, she's done more work in one month, and Thursday will be one month that she's been here, than some of my emergency managers do in a quarter, okay? That's EMPG. Then there's Homeland Security money. What is EMPG, please? Emergency Management Program Grant. It's just a, it's a acronym for a grant. Then there's Homeland Security Grant, which is another pot of federal money. And it used to be that the 14 counties would come to the trough like pigs and they'd fight over the money. Now they um, do it in a more equitable manner such that they base it on population and some other factors. So now Gladwin County gets a set amount of money rather than fighting for their projects. So she goes to the table at her first board meeting and says, we want tough books for the, for the police cars, we want radios, whatever she came to the table wanting. And had she not done that, that money would have been gone back to the federal government. Does that help you? That tells me what we got. What, 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 did, we, what did we agree to by getting that money? I mean, besides the position, that, do we, are, we, are we giving away any sovereign rights? Are we, as a county, are we giving, taking something and giving it to the federal government just so we can get that money? Are we signing away any of our county rights to do that? No, or is it just? You're here's my point. I guess as as a taxpayer, I see my money better staying in my county than than going to a federal government or a county government or even a state government, and then asking them, "Could you please give me my money back so I could do something with it?" Okay, the and, money and doesn't go anywhere. It stays here. There's a local planning team that she's a part of, and people come to the table and say, hey, I think this would be a great project for Gladwin County. For example, computers in police cars, just one example of, of hundreds. Then everybody agrees that that's the project that they want to go to. Then she goes to the table at the board meeting on behalf of Gladwin County, on behalf of that project, gets the money, brings it back to the county in the form of that project. And then she's responsible for keeping track of that equipment because there will be an audit. You know, there are, there are strings. There will be an audit, and it's upon her to keep track of where that equipment is so that when the auditors come in, she can say, this is what we spent the money on, here's it in this vehicle, et cetera. How does but it the money leave the county in the first place? Pardon me? If it's our money. Pardon me? If it's our money, the county's money, how does it leave the county in the first place? It doesn't leave the county. Well, she has to go ask for it. That's what he's, that's right. what he's asking. Yeah, yeah. We have to go ask for that money to get it back. We have to go to the federal government and say we want some of our money back in the form of a grant so we can buy computers for our police cars. Well, you don't our have point to is, avail yourself of this money. You don't want it. You know, you don't have to I avail I don't want to give it to them in the first place. <laughs> well, everybody pays taxes. I mean... You know? Yes, and they keep asking for more. Yeah. That's our point. Everybody pays taxes, and then when the, when the tax dollars run out, they say, we need more money for taxes so we can give it back to you. 
Well, this, this Homeland Security money, the, the, not the EMPG, but the Homeland Security, that money is dwindling. It used to be major league bucks, and now it's dwindling. Um, the EMPG is pretty steady. That money is still going to come in the, the part that pays part of the salary of the emergency manager. Um, but well, where's that money come from, though? The federal For that government. Year, where's the federal money? federal government getting that money. The Federal Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> Out of our pockets. We're going to move on. We can't take this here all night. Oh um, <coughs> Dave Petersheesh from the Road Commission. How you doing? Just want to introduce yourself and kind of bring us up to date what's taking what place. My name is Peter. My name is Dave I'm the new uh, managing director of the Road Commission. Terry came to our meeting uh, a couple weeks ago, asked me to come, introduce myself, and talk about a couple issues. Uh, why don't we start off with the ORV? This one's good. Uh, <laughs> the easier of the two. Uh, at our last meeting, we, we opened up uh, county roads to ORVs, uh, with the exception of two roads in the north <coughs> end, um, which is Joy Road, north of Meredith Grade. Meredith Grade and Chapel Dam, Chapel North Dam, North Dam North Shore River. <coughs> and the local townships will have a say if they choose to close some roads, let us know. There will be a time period before we update the maps um, if any roads get added to the closed list. Um, we'll also ask the Sheriff's Office if there's anything that they uh, prefer to have closed at this time. The Road yes. Commission do it that they are open. Anything else? It's road spinning or anything? It's sure. We uh, we touched on the drain commission issue that uh, we had with our culverts, and it's a uh, it's an issue that we're working on solving right now. The Beaverton Road crossing, as uh, I'm sure everyone has seen, that is closed and being worked on. Uh, we just started today. We obtained a culvert from Tuscola County. Uh, we were lucky to, to get that culvert because it would have been eight weeks to have one made. But, uh, it is our position that the drains were cleaned uh, right up to the culverts and below the existing culvert and it uh, caused the erosion that caused that culvert to settle. Uh, we've got several more out there that uh, we are watching. That, not the only problem, the only one out there. So, in, in dealings with the Drain Commission's office, they they are going to cost share, they are going to pay for the labor, we are paying for the culvert, but it's, it's still an issue that we need to work on at the county level. Okay. Yes, sir. So the money, even though you guys are splitting the cost, falls on our citizens again, correct? Absolutely. Okay, so it doesn't matter what department is paying the cost, you guys are sharing that cost out of your pocket. Just to yes. everybody, in, you're pulling it from two different pots, but it's all being funneled in from your wallets, just so you guys know that. Yes. That is uh, the unfortunate case, and it's, it falls back to us to get the road back open. Mm hmm. Is there any, you know, in my business, you have to have a product. Uh, performance liability insurance. Mm -hmm. Is it, doesn't the original contractor have any type of a performance insurance on that? The original the contractor of the culvert? Mm -hmm. Of the culvert? Yeah. Um, the culvert's been there for 40 years and performed, as far as we know, flawlessly for 39 of those 40 years up until the drains were cleaned. Going to it is where it's hopping from, right? Right. Which wasn't there 40 years. Thanks. You know, there's a lot of people that throw their garbage out in ditches and this is people we have to deal with, but I've been going up and down my road picking up garbage and, and tires. What do I do with the tires? <laughs> Can't leave you burn them. Sure. 
want me to bring them up to the road commission and build a parking lot for you? I hope we find better space than that. I'll pick them up on my road. I know some of them are just going to go work by your suit over the garden. Leave it off the road. I'll have to look at that for you. I don't know if our recycling program is going to look at it. If you bring those tires in in August, the city has a plan that they'll take four tires per residence. I picked up four of my road the other day. And I was on top of the island. I picked up last year. Where do you live? On a long road. Thank you. Thank you. Someone had a question? Yeah, I just wanted to know how they determine which roads are open and which roads are closed to the ORB? I mean, how do these two roads get added to being closed? There was, uh, prior to us going to the road commission meeting, that there was three townships that had put in for openings. Okay. Uh, Billings had put in for one, Secord had put in for one, and also Butman had put in for one. But the road commission decided to open those roads up with cooperation with the townships. But didn't they say they were closed? The Joy Road and Chuckadale were closed to RV? Closed to RV because they don't want people going into the refuge. The further they keep them away, the better. Just north of Meredith Grade, not the entire road. Just the sections north of Meredith Grade. Isn't that where the entrance to the RV trail are, though? No. Because you dug. It's a field trail, right? Field trail, yeah, that's not for RVs. That's all closed to motor vehicles, RVs. Did I answer your question? Is there any corrections or additions to the consent agenda? And we'll move forward. Motion to report. Report. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, finance, go back to finance. Okay. Um, Cindy Tefner from the 911 department has requested the payout of 100 <coughs> excuse me, hours of unused PTO time uh, per union contract. <coughs> this is the total payment of $1,668 to be paid from the 101-422-704 fund upon approval. I'll make that motion that we authorize that transfer. Motion support. Motion to support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, two employees in the uh, clerk's office would like to donate 34 hours each, 68 total, uh, to an employee in the probate court office who is going through medical treatments. Uh, the transfer has been approved by the court administrator and is allowable under the current policy. Uh, I'll make the motion to permit the transfer of the 68 hours. Support. Motion supported. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We. Uh, we have to, we have to uh, authorize uh, Christy Van Team to borrow up to one and a half million dollars. Uh, she has made the arrangements with the bank. The interest rate on the loan would be between a half a percent and 0.9 percent. <coughs> and I'll make the motion that we authorize. Uh, I'm going to add one thing. There is a fourteen thousand dollar loan origination fee that will be charged. But the interest rate is a half percent to 0.9. And I'll make the motion that we authorize Christy to borrow up to one half million as needed. I will support that. Motion is supported. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Aye. Now that's a resolution. That's a resolution. Roll call. That's a roll call. Commissioner Carl has been excused. Commissioner Walters? Yes. Commissioner Altman? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Burgle? Yes. And that's all I've got on the finance agenda. Okay. I think everybody went down to all the meetings that just took place. Christy, is she here? You want to the land bank or we'll just we'll work on that later? Anything um, in the land bank? What did you want me to discuss? Just what the meeting was? You can if you want to. So, just for $1.4 million. We had a brief land meeting to discuss cleanup of the building and that line that you fired in the past. And um, we're putting that out as we speak and hopefully going to be able to sell it. 
Can you guys explain to people here who might not have heard what the GIS is, what you're selling? GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems. It's a system that the county has. We have compiled several different layers, like aerial imagery, roads, parcel data, um, sections. You put it all together in this fancy software, and then you can analyze it and do all kinds of uh, things with it. And then there's different companies out there that would request that, that data, which is protected by our enhanced access policy, so it's not a foyable type of information. So the people that would request that information would then be using it in their day-to-day -day business operations, i.e. making money off what they do, which is why we came up with our system to charge. So they must pay for the information. Right, because it also costs us money to compile that data and maintain that data. We also have it protected by our policy so that if someone wants it, they're going to pay for it as well. What is the personal information that is going to be given away with it? Um, it's not uh, personal information that is protected. It would be your parcel, shape file, 
with the parcel number with it, the owner's name, the roads, the roads names, the sections, section numbers, township outlines and boundaries, that kind of information. You may currently go on the Gladham County website and check out the GIS mapping that is on there. Yes, there is a map viewer and there is a land records portal. It is a fee-based system for the land records portal, so if you go to the map viewer and you click on more details, it's going to want your money, but that's where all the information that is, you know, pertaining to the property to keep people from just being nosy, there's a fee system to it that's used mostly by realtors and banks and whatnot. But the map viewer itself has got a lot of free tools on there that anybody is more than welcome to go and use. There's also a millage calculator on there. So with the millages that we have coming, it's automatically linked to your <coughs> property's taxable value. If you click on that millage calculator and enter the millage rate, it will automatically tell you what your millage increase would be. On the map viewer, yes. people's parcel owner's names and coordinates are not displayed in the region? The parcel number with the owner name is displayed, yes. Which really isn't any different than what it used to be with the plat books that you right. used to go and buy. That's kind of Now you don't that's have like to do it. Yeah, digital plat book. And then we also need to um, adopt our, Policy. we did the revised pricing guide, yes. but the data usage agreement that we did, we changed it, so I would like to adopt this one as the GIS data usage sharing agreement with redistribution rights, so that we have two. And, and Thank I you. will make that motion. You also have a copy of that on your desk. Uh, so, so more. It's just a motion. Is it support? Yeah. yeah. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Also, Gina, you want to talk about Gypsy Moth just briefly while you're here? Sure. Um, it's been a, a very hard winter, but uh, unfortunately, there was also a lot of snow that kind of was like a nice little blanket for the Gypsy Moth. So I do not think we're going to get any winter kill. Still monitoring um, populations and watching. As soon as Hatch comes here soon, then we'll be doing treatment, um, treating about a thousand acres within three different townships. If you are in a treatment area, you would have received a notification letter by mail. I also sent them to the township, so the maps are available at township halls. I'm also um, in my office most mornings, uh, I tend to do field work in the afternoon, so if you need to get a hold of me, feel free to stop by or give me a call. Mr. Evans, did you want to say anything? <laughs> Bob. Okay. Bob Evans. Do you want My to name Bob. <laughs> you want to bring us up on FEMA, maybe a little bit? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. <clears throat> We've submitted uh, some new electronic data to, to FEMA, um, which wasn't the uh, AutoCAD one, but it was some other electronic data that uh, we could make for them. And he made that, submitted it, but I haven't heard any, anything back that they've received it. They've had it for a month, a month now. Uh, I think Doug Jacobson had talked to Ken, evidently. He doesn't come back, he doesn't talk to me, I guess. So, and said that they had received it. We'd sent it to Stantec. So hopefully that's all they need. And, so we'll be happy with it. Some of the the meantime, we've been working on Hay Township is the only problem that we've had so far because they're the only ones that have any maps. And so we were working on trying to take FEMA's basic flood elevation of the BFE and put it on our maps <coughs> for Hay Township. It's a pretty major job to try to do it for the whole county. And that way we could say, okay, here's here's a map, here's where the house is, here's where your floodplain is. And that would get some of the people out. It wouldn't get as many out as our study will get out, but it would get a lot of them out to our end. We've had uh, a request for a guy from Gladwin Township that doesn't show on FEMA's preliminary maps 
and obviously doesn't show on ours and nowhere near any flood zone. In fact, the whole city of Gladwin would have to flood before he get any water. And they're, <clears throat> they're requiring him to buy flood insurance. So. Some, so, of the, some, some yeah. of the townships were wondering where we were, so. Pardon? Some of the townships were wondering where, where that was with FEMA. Yeah. And I addressed and, it with them. I've been waiting to hear from them, and then I was going to schedule a meeting. I got your note, but, okay. but we haven't heard back from them. In fact, please send them a letter this, probably this week, um, uh, asking them why they haven't acknowledged having them. They were supposed to send him a confidentiality agreement and he sent the information to them before they gave the confidentiality agreement, but they'd sent one to me earlier, and it's not a confidentiality agreement. It's a, hey, anybody can use this data. We just aren't taking any responsibility for it. And I said, you know, that's, I think I told you that the last mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, I'm wondering, and, and maybe I heard it wrong, but you said we're, we're applying FEMA's flood graduating levels to some of our maps? No, but then, okay. We, looked at, we were looking at doing that for Hay Township. Hay Township has a lot of people who have been forced to buy flood insurance. But but didn't we pay for a flyover so that we could do our own map? I thought we had done that already. Yes, we have that. We've submitted it to them, but they haven't they haven't accepted it yet. So what what I thought we'd do in the meantime, because we've done a year now that these people have had to buy flood insurance again in Hay Township, and I said we might be able to put their floodplain map on our drawings that show the homes. And then that'll take a lot of the people out. Because right now, <clears throat> if you look at their flood map, I've never measured their line, but what are they? Their line's probably 100 feet wide, would you guess? Uh, yeah, and their, their original floodplain shape files are on our web map. They just, you just have to turn them on. Yeah. So if they went to the website and on the right, there's a, a tab that says uh, layers or, I forget what it's called, but if you clicked on that, opened it a drop-down box, there would be a lot of the different GIS layers that you could turn on and off, and FEMA's original floodplain shape files that they gave us, we put on there. So if you turn those on and then zoomed in with the imagery, you could see. The problem is it's still their outdated shape files and not the good ones. If we had the good ones, we could put in there, like he's saying, they could zoom in on that map and print off that map and show where that floodplain is. And did we miss our deadline homes. date to get it turned in in time to get them to accept it? I mean, I'm just, because we did that flyover, what, two years ago? So we're the yeah, Working kind of slow. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, with this FEMA thing, you know, we're- I think he had his end up first, but but I don't know if you recognize them or my <laughs> state your name. Or uh, I know the township's contract is with uh, Voice That's to have these maps done. Yep. Prior to the contracts, didn't we know the data that was going to be required? And why are we, we stalling the data <coughs> the way FEMA would require it so these can be done in a FEMA. timely fashion? Well, there's two reasons. If, if you want my opinion, why we shouldn't give it to them. If there's a discrepancy, the National Academy of Science will appoint a committee to view their data and view our data and figure out which one is the most accurate. We have a computer TechRAS model along with all the drawings that we made and so we go into that committee meeting with a stack of information like this. They go into that meeting with one sheet of paper that they took a crayon and drew a line on basically. So, in my opinion, which, which study is the Academy of Science going to accept? That accept ours. But if, we give them but if we give them our information, then they'll take it and do their own, how can I say this politely, half-butt study, and then they'll go in with maybe a study this high, and ours is like this, and the Academy might say, well, this is a little better, but this is acceptable. And so that's why I wouldn't want to give it to them. Secondly, we don't own that information. That information belongs to Boyce Hydro. We bought a study from Boyce Hydro, the same way that they did 
Jerome and Edenville <coughs> and the village of Sanford. That's what we bought. That's what we contracted for. So that's all we could request. So, and that, that was acceptable to FEMA. And now FEMA is saying that they want this extra information. And if FEMA, if FEMA had paid for this information to do it to start with, in fact, Lee had told them that he may be interested in giving it to them if they reimbursed the townships the $120,000 they spent. So they're trying to get the information for free and trying to make their study from it. We have an acceptable study. We have a study that far exceeds anything they've done. Probably exceeds anything that was done in Edenville and Jerome and the village of Sanford. Even. But, so that's, that's my opinion. But it's not my information to give to them. It's Boyce's information. Boyce has fulfilled their contract to us. Has given us. So FEMA is the one that's changed the. Yes. Okay. That's what I want to know. Okay. We think we've given them something now that that should be acceptable to them. I think what it boils down to is they want to be able to put this on their their drawings electronically. Well, the information we had before was a lot more than just that, and so now um, Lee is uh, Boy Cyber has come up with a way to. To just give them enough information to put them on their drawings. And we're hoping that's going to satisfy them. <coughs> okay. no. So now you got FEMA trying to play these games. Uh, I'm late to this little thing about FEMA. Um, again, like that first gentleman that was talking about the government coming in doing <coughs> things that aren't constitutional. Here we have FEMA telling us how we're going to operate our lake. Here we have FERC coming in telling us how we're going to operate our dams. When are we going to say no? What, start, what, what is it Amen. that FEMA's got that we want? If, if, you're, if FEMA puts you in the floodplain, your mortgager can, can force you to buy flood I have a contract that says I don't need it. You have a contract with who? With my bank. I guess they could probably change that anytime. Well, they, they did for GM too. I guess they can. So right. when's this county going to say get out? Enough. <laughs> well, <that's right. laughs> you know, well, when are we going to stand up and say no? I think we kind of did. If we came late to the game, so FEMA had six thousand two hundred fifty parcels in the flood. No, no, zero, none. Yeah. Oh, wait. Well, except you want to belong to their program. You want to belong to the NFIP, which is the National Flood Insurance Program. Because if, if you live in one of those flood zones... You like can buy it off TV. It what? <laughs> you can buy flood insurance from a TV commercial. <laughs> well, you can, but you pay a lot of money. The, it's subsidized in the NFIP, so those people on Red Off Drive probably want to buy it. <coughs> okay, but now we have FERC coming in telling us about the bands. We have... Uh, Who's telling you about the dams? FERC, FER, uh, right. Federal yeah. Energy... FERC is, FERC is required, which by the way, uh, uh, I was telling everybody it's a 10,000 year storm. It's a PMF, possible maximum flood. It's actually closer to a million year storm. Okay, required and then we have EPA coming in telling us we can't have fireplaces and uh, wood stoves. When are we going to say no? Now we got to move along. Well, how about it? When are we going to say no? <coughs> that's what, that's where you vote for your state representative and your congressman. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys, <laughs> senior legislature. That's not for moving on. He left this up off the list yeah, there. Well, why are the people we vote, why are they represent us in the law and serve represent? Okay, listen, I'm, I'm trying to get things through this and move forward. So, uh, Sharon, would you give us your report, please? <laughs> On the 9th of April, I attended the Beaverton Area Business Association meeting with County Clerk Laura Brandon Mabel. We gave a presentation on the need for the Headley, rollback, uh, Headley Restoration Rollback. On the 10th, I attended a land bank meeting. On the 10th, I also attended the Hay Township meeting. They've appointed their potential election workers. <coughs> on the 11th, I attended the legislative breakfast. Mike Hargrave from the airport reported that there will be drag races held there on May 17th and an air show on July 12th and 13th. 
and the Chamber of Commerce announced the annual golf outing will be May 16th. On the 14th, I attended the Tobacco Township meeting, the passing of Jim Andrus, a longtime board trustee, and fire board member was announced. Members there, and I see the gentleman is there in the white sweater. Stand up, please. Uh, members there, thank you, asked that the Board of Commissioners write to our senators and congressmen urging them to monitor Boyce Hydro to be sure that Boyce has the money to repair the dams if the water is released for repairs. This is a major concern to everyone who lives on Wixom Lake. On the 15th, I attended a library board meeting. The Friends of the Library will be holding their book sale May 15th, 16th, 17th. We had a detailed report on the progress of the Beaverton Activity Center. There are currently 18,412 card-carrying patrons of the Gladwin County District Library. In March, 4,709 patrons used the library, and 2,203 patrons used the computers. A total of 11,616 materials were placed in circulation, and thank you because those are your tax dollars at work. On the 16th, I attended the data committee meeting. Dan Eggleston, president of IT Wright, was in attendance. He gave a thorough explanation of how all IT problems are to be handled. The user, sitting at their computer or their scanner or whatever, contacts IT right and they make the call for the fix. Dan will be here Thursday for the department head meeting to go through the steps for IT fixes. Also. We already did this at the data meeting about the county price usage, and I made that motion. Thank you. That's my report. Okay. Um, the IT right meeting, of course, with Sharon. Uh, the Gladwin County Sports Complex meeting. Uh, the Clement Township Board meeting. The Airport Board meeting. The Butman Township Board meeting. The Beaver Township Board meeting. The Fair Board meeting in the Michigan Housing of the Commission meeting. And uh, uh, I didn't, the dates are in my appointment book if you need them, Madam Clerk. Uh, but uh, uh, the, uh, we covered, I answered questions uh, from each board uh, and made presentations uh, accordingly. And, uh, uh, but I forgot the Central Michigan Department of Health also. And I, oh, I want to publicly thank Joel Johnson. We, I'm on the Finance and Personnel Committee of the Central Michigan District Health Department, and uh, we, didn't, we got $285,000 from them uh, for 2011 Medicaid reimbursement. But I mentioned it to Joel last month at the uh, uh, Republican Party meeting. He talked to someone in Lansing. We got the two, they paid us the 2012 300000 that they owed us. They still owe us for 2013. And here's the significance of that to you and all, all of us in the room. The, they have not paid, we have, I haven't paid our $22,250 rent payment for our building over here for the last quarter. And in other words, they've been, uh, the Central Michigan Health Department is, is in a pinch on money as well. So uh, we, I'll get bills tomorrow and hope that our 22,000 uh, bucks is in the, in the chest to be signed. So uh, that's where we are on that part. But Joel uh, pushed the buttons and did get us that uh, other money. So, thank you, thank you, Joel. You're <laughs> all of my township board meetings and uh, listen to what they are all working on at their at the present time. Laura, she was there with me, and we addressed the Headley issues, answered questions, and brought everybody up to date on that. Uh, on the 9th, I attended the EDC meeting in Beaverton where they discussed many things of interest in the production of the full-length movie here in Gladwin County and coming businesses and uh, setup of the Wi-Fi in uh, the city of Gladwin here. 
There also will be a ceremony for the uh, leadership, a graduation ceremony for the leadership program coming up. Um, I spoke at the uh, Beaverton Youth Recreation Program on the <coughs> rollback issue on the 16th. On the 21st, I attended the MAC meeting in Grayling. That was the first one of those that I attended, and that was quite a meeting. And they discussed so many things that I just gave you all a copy of the flyer that they passed out because there's a lot of legislative issues there. Uh, there's no Michigan Works meeting <coughs> this month, so I just gave you also a uh, flyer, the newsletter from that. That's my report. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Myself, uh, <clears throat> the 27th, uh, spent all night with. Uh, Central Dispatch and the dam <coughs> operators and emergency management talking to Marianne, Florida. A lieutenant from the state police, uh, which set up a EOC, an emergency management operations center in Midland. Uh, we were talking back and forth with them, so there wasn't too much sleep uh, the 27th. Uh, 29th attended the fire hall, the ribbon cutting, which was very nice, very nice building. Uh, April 2nd, um, Again, with FEMA meeting uh, with the lieutenant, uh, April 7th, uh, finance and uh, ad addressing committee. Uh, also, Glavin City, uh, talked about insurance with our uh, insurance carrier. Um, attended the Grout Township, Township stuck in with uh, Mr. Burgel. And uh, went to the Frozen Affair. Uh, the city I met with them and talked to that about how they're funding that and how it's working out at the uh, ice arena or hockey. Their programs out there. Uh, also, next local council of government is Monday here in the commissioner room. 28th at 7 p.m. I think everybody's got a card. Also, some of the veterans that we've lost over the last couple months. Uh, Alan L. McNall uh, from Sage Township, World War II. William Furclaw, uh, Tobacco Township, Korea. Harold Clammer, Grout Township. World War II, Walter Weimer, Billings Township, World War II, Gordon J. Hoffman, Billings Township, World War II, John Kelly, Sage Township, Korea, Renaud, Hugh Franklin, Butman Township, Vietnam, and that's all I have. Any board comments? I, I have two. Um, first of all, on the 12th, of May at 6 p.m. in this room there will be a severe weather spotter free training and our uh, EM our emergency person it, it, director is the one that's going to be doing that so if you would like to be part of that um, here's <coughs> you can register and I'll just leave this flyer right here in my my desk for me there's more of you may take those and I asked the chair, and he said this is okay. There will be a spaghetti dinner on May 2nd at the Knights of Columbus Hall, and all of the money goes to the Jeannie Mercer uh, Cancer Fund. Jeannie and her husband own the Pepper Mill restaurant. She's the best pie baker you're ever going to get. She learned it well from her mother because her mother's back now baking pie. 
but uh, I really hope that you could participate this in this and put this on your calendar. There's going to be, she was diagnosed with stage three ovarian cancer and she has had surgery and it has her port implanted and is going to be starting chemo. And um, this is, I like to see a community come together. Thank you. We'll open up for a couple comments. Any, like say three minutes if you have any comments. Okay, I'm sure, uh, a little bit background on the team and uh, then I'm going to put in a plug for the board side of it. But Lee Muller came to the, uh, the commissioners and myself um, three years ago, four years ago, and told us what FEMA was doing. He said they, uh, they did this in Midland County, now they have Gladwin County in their sights. So we put together and tried to get together and finally got together with the supervisors and the supervisors stepped up to the plate and put up the money to do the study. Now in that, um, now I'll move into the comment that Sharon had made about when they talked about someone had asked it if Boyce Hydro had the money to do the required modifications to the dam, people you need to understand those aren't improvements. They don't help anything. They'll help you if you have the million year flood, but all that does is floods Midland, obviously. And the dam doesn't fail, but we're not going to have that million year flood anyway. But <clears throat> as to whether they have the money or not, they don't. And Lee Muller has been right up front with everybody on that. They, they don't have the money to do it. They try to get the money financing to finance it, but they, they can't do it. But I think a lot of this is put on some misinformation about the Sanford Dam. The Sanford Dam had a leak in the dam. It's an earthen dam, and water is leaking through the dam. Now, Civil engineering by background, so I'll tell you right up front, if, if you have water coming through a dam, it's an emergency, through an earthen dam. You have no idea how big the hole is in the dam until it lets go. So, <clears throat> Boyce Hydro went to FERC and told them they had to repair it. They went to the DEQ to get their permit. The, the permit told them that it was going to be uh, 180 days, I think, to get the permit. They said, we don't have 180 days. So they went back to FERC and said, hey, DEQ tells us we can't do it for 180 days till we get the permit. FERC says, look at the first word in their title, Michigan Department of Education, and look at the first word in ours, Federal Energy Regulator. So he had to go, he, had, he went ahead and did it. The DEQ ended up fining him $1,800, I think. So he, he made the repairs to the dam, they had the money to do that. Then FERC says, or not FERC, the DEQ says, oh, while the water level's down, because they had to lower the water level in order to do that, while the water level's down, we want you to make these modifications to the drainage system in the dam. And they said, we don't have the money to do it. And so that's when things came up. Well, there was a, a group of Dow executives that got together. Lee explained what, the, what was going on. They said, we will finance this. We will loan you the money to, do, to repair the dam or put these modifications in that the DEQ wants. And if you have the water level back to normal level next spring, we'll forgive the note. So people are saying that, that he lowered the water level and then held the people on the lake up to ransom, and that isn't the case. These people volunteered to loan him the money and actually paid for it out of their own pockets. So I think there were like five people. So, so and, and I've gotten to know Lee Muller pretty closely and became a good friend through this FEMA project, and he has done He's probably saved the, he saved the people of Gladwin County at least six million dollars per year for the rest of their lives. And those rates are going to go up because FEMA has become 
the FEMA is supposed to be self-sustaining. So everybody that has flood insurance, hold on, because your rates are going to be going up 25, 30% for the next few years. And so if you live in a flood zone, good luck. But so just thought I'd toss that out because there's a lot of misinformation going around. Thanks, Bob. Anyone have any comments about night meetings? You like them? Yeah. 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 How come none of you guys were quiet? <laughs> <laughs> because because we made the motion and passed it. Yeah, I know. Any other comments? Motion. I'm Pat Faber from the Bible Council. I'm not being short. And it's not an issue at all. I'm really familiar with. And it's the the county zoning. Um, you know, there's questions that arise of how did we get this plan? Um, who you know who wrote it? Uh, who gets to choose the rules over our private property? Um, who has jurisdiction and authority? It seems like any research we do always leads back to this board. You know, the previous board we had communication with and. We had very little knowledge. Um, we don't really have authority. And once the lawsuit starts, now we really can't even speak uh, about where we all sit and stand on personal private property. Um, there's nothing that can be done with that, that zoning ordinance without approval of this board, according to the county zoning ordinance itself. You are our elected representatives. You. Um, you like people of this community. Um, I love living in a free country. Um, the United States of America, under a constitution, we should never forget that, a compact among states that, that enumerated the power of government, they tried to limit, limit it, and they enumerated and um, limitlessly the rest of the rules back to the people. I've always been under the impression, since I've been paying attention, that governments derive their just powers from the consent of the governed, and that would be us. Awesome the people. There should be discussion on this only ordinance. We are a sovereign county. You guys are elected because we're a sovereign county. This zoning ordinance um, should have leeway to match our demographics. I'm not sure that the, the wording of it um, reflects rural Gladwin County as a community. It does represent a blanket of a region, and it's easy to adopt that, but it needs to be revisited. Here's something that I read in here that was concerning to me when it comes to personal private property out of the zoning ordinance. And it, um, it, it's talking about the zoning administrator's duties. And this is not to pick on Justin, this is of anybody with that position. The zoning administrator shall be empowered to make inspections <coughs> of buildings or premises to carry out enforcement of this order. Now that is the direct result of applying for a zoning change or alteration is a result of complying with the county ordinance and accepting the county that it has jurisdiction over private domain property. Let's read it again. The zoning administrator shall be empowered, shall, to make inspections of buildings and premises, that would be our land, to carry out enforcement of this ordinance. Now what am I getting at? By asking for this variance, by asking for special use, which this planning commission has been uh, adamant, that's what they require to avoid the lawsuit, you are submitting authority over your property to an appointed property sheriff, if that makes any sense, giving him or her authority even where Mike Shea himself has none. That's alarming, but that's in that ordinance. Now we could be like Obama saying that, well sure the NDAA can indefinitely detain uh, United States citizens, but we would never do that. But it's there. Yeah. Right? Just saying. Um, whether folks agree with one volume or not, the premise that this zoning board and county commission are setting, with the help of the county attorney and only again so of those who else, is dovetailing into any and all activity defined and yet to be defined as criminal until reviewed and classified. There's a statutory overreach that cannot continue. The level of jurisdiction this and other counties are playing over private property is heinous. There needs to be discussion on this zoning ordinance. 
far as we can tell, the master plan expired in 2012. <coughs> shouldn't, even be, shouldn't even be applicable unless it's renewed. <coughs> Just consider whether you like my bug or not, this dovetails into shooting ranges, dirt bike tracks, any activity that someone might come to our community, say from Oakland County, they like dirt bikes and cars, they won't go to trail. Nope, we have to regulate that. And now we have a county property sheriff that needs access to that property to make sure that you're complying with the demographics of the rural community of Gladwin County. Please think about what's going on. This is going on a long time, over a year now. It needs to stop. It's ridiculous. We don't have the money. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Else. My name is Scott Piero of Buckeye Township. I'm an avid mud bogger. I support the Miller family and anybody else who wants to have fun on their own property or have friends come over and have fun. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Piero. Anything? Yes. Uh, do you want me to come up or? Just state your name. My name is Ryan Legremo. I come from Midland County. Uh, up here to support the Miller family. Uh, despite anything else that you guys might have discussed in the past, dealing with the Miller incident, or not incident, but in a Miller situation, I would really like you guys to consider one thing. Uh, many people travel a long distance to come to these events. Many people spend a lot of money in your community. On the average of uh, a small little admission fee that they might charge to get into their event, for every dollar that they raise, it's anywhere from five to ten dollars that are spent in your community. Uh, the, the gentleman before me said it's a very rural county, not overly laden with businesses. And I know the little businesses here, party stores, gas stations, stuff like that, need the need those sales. Uh, stop and consider that one little thing also when you make your decisions and how you uh, proceed with this situation. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Can you state your name again? You said it really quick. Uh, Ryan is the first name and the last name spelled L U G H E R. M.O. and from Midland County. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much. Okay. Anybody else? If I break this up into two sections, I get more through this. <laughs> I just want to mention for everybody's information, this was the 100-year storm that we just had last week. <clears throat> we passed, they were passing 34,000 feet per second at the Edenville Dam. And that's a hundred year storm. So. so if you didn't flood in that storm, you should be out of the flood zone. <laughs> motion to we'll receive and file. Make a motion that we receive and file. To support. Support. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Motion to Support. Hey Terry, yes. did you Before close you public leave, comments? May I say thank you very much. It's nice. Since I was the person who made the motion that we have at least have a night meeting. Thank you very much for coming. I do appreciate it. I just wanted to close the public comments because I think there's a few more that wanted to talk. Kelly Miller, Lightland Township, Mud Bog Guy. Just want to say thanks, Joe. Last year's been very informal. Me, you, you know, everybody here. You know, now we get to see a night meeting, get to see a lot of faces. You know, I think it's awesome we get to see how our county is working. Obviously, we do have some disagreements on things. And as Mr. Faber said, you know, we got to revisit some stuff here. You know, obviously, we're sitting in a bad way financially. It's not just the county, it's us individually. It's me just much the next person, Brian just the same as you. We need to move forward. It's been a year. You know, I said I was going to turn the volume off. Well, <coughs> here we are. You know, we're not just a bunch of names. We're not just a bunch of people. We do have faces. I, I really love the fact that I didn't lose a couple hours worth of work today to come here. Yeah. You know, uh, and just for the record, just throw it out there. I will be on the November ballot for District Oakland County Commission. <laughs> I surely hope over the last year and a couple of years for just a couple months now. You know, I hope 
you know, you guys can look down the side, make some changes before we come to November. You know, there's a lot of people stepping up to run this year. A lot of people threw their hats in the rings. You know, people are waking up, we're paying attention. You know, obviously. Look around. This, this is amazing. You know, we're starting to talk. We got dialogue. Now I think we need to go somewhere with it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. One more. Excuse Thank me. You Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Kim Hall, Buckeye Township. And um, as a mud bogger, as a property owner, I've been trying to keep close tabs on what's going on because it affects everyone's property rights. And all I can ask is that the board look into the information that Tom Dunn and Tab Faber have given you guys, you know, I, it, it, and, and why this is still continuing on and nothing being resolved. It, it's all in black and white. It's been printed out and given to you, and I just would like it resolved in a constitutional way. Just to close out real quick, because I know you guys want to go because it's late. <laughs> and it, I want to go because it's late. But as a taxpayer and a property only, owner in this community, and I, I'm lucky enough to own two properties and pay taxes in both cities, you're both welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I want I wanna you guys to be good stewards with the money you have. And you're taking a loan out for $1.5 million, and I think I heard a number of $14,000 that was paid to, to generate that loan. And I don't know if you've... Um, gamed out what your interest payments are going to be, whether it's 0.5 or 0.9 percent interest. But as a taxpayer, that's money that's not going to go into an employee's pocket because you're paying interest now. So you're going to either have to make more cuts to pay your interest. I'm just guessing here because I take loans out, I own a business. Or you raise our taxes to pay your interest so you can keep the employees you have. Um, I don't know what cuts you've made and what's been reinstated since you've made cuts in reinstated positions. So I don't know if our budget's less or more or equal to as it was before you started asking for taxes. Um, I do know that I was in possession of an email from Laura Brandon probably two years ago when she sent a message to the old board that said, we've made all the cuts we can make. The only resolution to this is a Headley rollback. We decided one voting cycle ago to go and make it a safety millage. That didn't fly. So now we're going to go to the original language from the email that I got from Laura that said we need a Headley rollback to get our money. And I'm going to say a Headley override. And I'm going to say as a taxpayer, I don't want to give you more money until you're responsible with the money that you do have. That's what I'm looking for from my leaders. That's what I want to elect, people that lead and not follow. If we look at our millage language, and compare it to all the communities around us, whether it be for a school or for you guys, the language is almost identical. I'm looking for a county that starts to lead and not follow. One of the things I would just like to respond to that, if you look at cuts, there's two deaths missing here. It started here. It did start here. You and, guys... And I will tell you, having had a year off, well, when I was on the board when there were seven, and now that I'm on the board where there are five, I uh, <clears throat> am very impressed with the amount of work that I have to do. Willingly, because I said I would do this, but I will tell you, check it out. Right here is where your cut started, and it has happened to every department in this courthouse. But really, if we're going under the proper constitutional order, since we have adjourned, we're done. <laughs> really? Excellent. Let's go. What was the announcement? We're done. We're done.